Um, let us get a status report right now. Uh, as I said, the U.S. reports an unprecedented staging of advanced Serbian artillery, tanks, and mechanized infantry units. You've been in dialogue with members of the U.S. administration. Have you withdrawn them, as your army chief says? First of all, thank you very much for having me. And I uh, wanted to say that we always appreciated all the reports that were coming from NSC, White House, and all the other institutions that are coming from the United States. But the real issue is that these reports were not fully accurate. Let me say this. We signed in 2001 an arrangement with NATO, which means that that's about our access to ground safety zone. And we agreed upon the fact that we can use that freely with no restrictions, ground safety zone and, of course, Serbia's territory itself, with no restrictions towards equipment, towards weaponry. But you need to know something. A year ago, we used to have 14,000 people at the administrative line with Kosovo. A few days ago, we used to have less than 8.4 thousand. Today, we have it 4.4 thousand, which is a regular number of people. And we always hear and we always listened when our, when our partners were asking us to de-escalate the situation and we did it this time, although there were no reasons for a big worry because we didn't need any kind okay. of wars, any kind of clashes with NATO. To the contrary, we want to see, and I'm reiterating this, bigger presence of KFR okay. in Kosovo, particularly in the north. That would be, we hope, one of the ways, one of the ways to support Serbian people's safety and security, in, particularly in northern Kosovo. All right. Well, I'm sure people will be very happy to hear you say that. On the other hand, though, on Friday, Milan Radojic, vice president of the Serb List Party, admitted to taking part in the September 24th shootout, which is what we're talking about and which is what has brought this crisis. Now, he, just hours later, uh, rather, just hours after that, you apparently moved thousands of troops to the border with Kosovo. Um, why did you move troops to the border? And was it, you know, as some have suggested, to distract from the fact that this Serbian politician had, had admitted to taking part in this attack with a huge armed cash? No, not at all. It was not a case. Uh, you know, our army people, they do follow the situation in the field and they move our forces in a way that they believe it can be, I don't know, the most useful and uh, they have their own operations and everything else. But I did not sign even a high alert for, the, for our army people. We, and you need to know this. And uh, the number of people was not accessing not even a 60% of what we used to have okay. in the borders. So then let me ask you this follow-up the administrative then. line. Okay. The borders. But I need to say, let me, let, me, let me say this. It was not a proof of anything because Serbia was the last country, the last entity, whatever you call it, that needed those incidents in Kosovo right. because of the dynamism of an entire negotiating process. Everybody was seeing that Serbia was a constructive partner during the dialogue process, that Serbia was doing a lot of concessions. The other side didn't do anything. The other side was doing this a sort, a sort of gradual ethnic cleansing. There are 10% less Serbs living in North Kosovo than two years ago, just after Albin Kurti came to power. Okay. It was four, 420 attacks against Serbian civilians, against Serbian people in Kosovo. Oh, all right, let's take some of power. these. Let's take there some of these because we can't just go through numbers, sacral, sir. Sacral object. Yeah, we can't just go through numbers. And the United States and I EU... Numbers, I believe that numbers are important. Okay, does not believe that the Kosovars have conducted ethnic cleansing. But here's what I want to ask you. The EU has said 
forces, i.e. your forces, need to stand down. We also expect, and this is important, no impunity for the perpetrators. They need to face justice. We need to go back to a situation where the parties are talking and returning to the EU facilitated dialogue. Now, you have, are saying all the right things right now, that you've pulled back these troops and, and they, you know, they, they shouldn't be involved in this kind of thing. So, will Milan Radojic, who admitted doing this and taking part in it, will he face accountability? What are you going to do with him? Thank you once again for giving me an opportunity to explain this. But no, no, it's just a really simple question. Will he be held accountable finish. as the EU is demanding? A very simple, a very simple response to you. Of course, Serbia will held accountable all the people that committed criminal deeds mm -hmm. and that we might find on our territory. And he is available and he is on our territory and prosecutors will do their job.